Hello and welcome to this Talk Friday, the 12th of May. Now, the excess deaths are carrying on in the United Kingdom and we've looked at data recently that shows they're also carrying on in other countries around the world. But we've got some new data released today from the UK, just released this morning a few hours ago from the Office for Health Improvement, so national official government data, and sadly that is showing that increased deaths are occurring in all age groups in 2022 and into 2023 sadly. Um, Very little in the mainstream media about this, although we will be giving a glimmer of hope that it's starting to um, starting to cover this this tragedy that's that's undergoing in in many, many countries. And also the new data today gives us some insight into the cause of the excess deaths. And I'm going to be looking at these in some detail later on, but briefly, a lot of deaths from cardiovascular disease, a lot of deaths from cerebrovascular disease, strokes and things. But other respiratory diseases, strangely enough, the deaths are way below what we would expect. So some pretty interesting information. Let's just look at the excess deaths graphics that we look at first of all here from the Office for National Statistics. And we see that we're above the dotted line most of the time, sadly, in 2022, meaning there's more deaths uh, than we would expect than the average, well above in fact, if we look at the most recent data, the last two weeks, well, we see that the excess deaths are way above the average. These are where COVID is mentioned on the death certificate, although a lot of these, of course, aren't caused by COVID directly. It's just mentioned on the, on the death certificate. Now, before I look at some more data, I just want to, uh, with some relief, really, note that at least one aspect of the UK media is taking notice of this problem now. It's a bit of a melodramatic title. Brits are dying in their tens of thousands and we don't really have any idea why. But unfortunately, sadly, the sentiment is true. And not only is it true in the United Kingdom, it's probably true where you are watching as well. This is a uh, an underreported um, global phenomenon, what we could call a pandemic, really. Um, certainly affecting uh, Western many Western countries, um, United States, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, Europe, places like that. Tens of thousands of Brits uh, die, um, tens of thousands more more Brits die than usual from May to December 2022, so particularly at the end of 2022. Excluding COVID as a cause of death, these are not COVID deaths, these are caused by other factors, raising serious questions as to why so many died. And uh, from May to December 2022, 32,441 excess deaths. Now, that's all from the um, the Mirror, Daily Mirror, which is a, is a British uh, national newspaper. So, so relieved that that's starting to get through. The, the fact that other news agencies, BBC, for example, seem to be saying essentially nothing about this um, really is, is a cause for concern in its self. Now, the first data I want to look at is from the Office for National Statistics. Well, we've just looked at that, actually. So I think we'll go on and look at... Um, no, we'll look at a bit more on that, first of all. This was this was the week before the number of deaths registered in the UK, week ending the 21st of April 2023. That's week 16 of the year. Um, so there was 14,024 deaths, 22.1 above the average. That's 2,000. 540 excess deaths, huge amounts. Now, the latest data that we've got, number of deaths registered in the UK um, in the week ending the 28th of April. So this is the latest data that we have from the ONS because the death certificates take time to get through. So it's not unreasonable. Week 17, 13,690 excess uh, deaths altogether, sorry, but 12.9% above the average. So, okay, we've gone from 22.1% above the average, but we're still, I'm afraid, still well above the average. That's 1,569 excess deaths in the week. And that means in the UK, in the past week, there's been 4,190 excess deaths. As we've said many times, just imagine this was a terrorist attack. 4,190 people were killed. It would be a state of war. But because people are dying in different settings, as we'll see in a minute, the government just don't seem to be commenting on it at all, with the notable exception of some MPs, but very little on this, tragically. Now, um, England and Wales specifically, um, 12,152 deaths, 
459 did mention novel coronavirus, uh, 3.8% of all deaths, but uh, 65% of these 301 deaths COVID recorded as the underlying cause of death. Now, this is surprising because, as we'll see, other respiratory diseases are very low and COVID kills primarily as a respiratory disease, you would have thought. Um, so there's a bit of a, let's say, a tension between different government sources of data here. Uh, but where were people dying? Um, private homes are 23% above the average. Hospitals, 10.7%. Care homes, 8.4% above. Other settings, 14.3% above. So uh, people are dying in many settings, primarily uh, at home. Now, the, uh, the main data I want to look at today is from here. This is just released, as I say, within the last few hours. Office for uh, Health Improvement and Disparities. Looking at excess mortality in England uh, and English regions, May up to 2023. Now, this is data for England, um, but um, it's probably got some applicability to, to most areas. We can't say that for sure, but it, it looks likely because there's many commonalities between different countries. So let's look at some of this data now. Now, the first one is, is really quite concerning. This shows different age groups. So remember, the dotted line is what we would expect. This is a person's age 0 to 24. Pity they don't subdivide it more than that. Um, we notice, of course, that the numbers aren't high compared to other age groups because, thankfully, less young people are dying. But um, they're still above what we would expect. And as we see for 2022, the lines here are way above what we uh, would expect primarily. So we are seeing more deaths. We're seeing excess deaths in the younger age group 0 to 24s. And there we see that really quite clearly from January 2022. So I'm afraid it's quite clear that the excess deaths are affecting all age groups. So the explanations that we need to derive as to why this catastrophe is occurring needs to take this into account. This is affecting the younger age groups as well as the older age groups. Uh, 25 to 49, again, we see... Um, during the pandemic, of course, um, the, uh, they were um, very slightly increased, but then not not really very much in this age group. But then 2022, again, for most of 2022, I'm afraid we do see an increase uh, accelerating through the second half of uh, 2022 excess deaths. And again, that's a bit of a blow up of 2022. Second half of 2022, particularly, we see many more people in this age group what we might call the young adult age group dying now this is people aged 50 to 64 uh, the line there is what we would expect as an average so we see that very occasionally deaths have been below average but primarily uh, deaths now of course th th this was during the pandemic and this is a 50 to 64 year old age group so there was some deaths from covid but uh, all throughout 2022 these are all excess deaths here that was the only time there were less than normal there these are all excess deaths, and um, they are the majority of them are not attributable to COVID. Um, 50 to 64 year old age range, we see the same pattern in 2022. Sadly, uh, many deaths above the dotted line, which is above the average, not what we want to see at all. And again, a blow up of that, just uh, emphasizing the fact that deaths in this age group are higher than the five-year average. A 65 to 74, well, it's still there in 2022, uh, more deaths than we would expect. Of course, the scale here is different you know, because um, old people die more than young people, obviously. But again, when we look at the blow-up, we do see throughout the second half of 2022, particularly more people dying than we would expect. Uh, this is the older age group, 75 to 84. Again, particularly throughout 2022, more deaths than we would expect above the average. 75 to 84 year old age group and people above 85, again, less pronounced, less excess deaths, but it's still there, particularly through uh, 2022. Unfortunately, we see there. Now, um, this is what we're looking at now is so we've seen that there's increased deaths in all age ranges. Let's look at some of the causes of death now, as far as we have information on this. Now, the first one shows that cardiovascular disease is increased. More people are dying of cardiovascular disease than we would expect. And we see that here. 
So again, we see occasionally fewer people have died of cardiovascular disease than we would expect, but mostly they're increased. So that's all cardiovascular disease. So there's an excess deaths through cardiovascular disease. The question is not so much the cardiovascular disease, it's what is causing the increase in the cardiovascular disease. That is the critical question that just doesn't seem to be getting asked. Why is cardiovascular disease increased? This data tells us it is, doesn't tell us why. Uh, this is ischemic heart disease. Now, ischemic heart disease is uh, specific. It's where there's not enough blood getting through the coronary arteries to perfuse the myocardium with the nutrients and oxygen that it needs. So death from ischemic heart disease. If there's a cutoff in that uh, blood supply altogether, that's a myocardial infarction, a heart attack. And again, we see that um, it's, it's really quite uh, increased ischemic heart disease, again, particularly through 2022. Now, we do get some peaks here that correlate with the waves of the, the pandemic, as you might expect, but that does not explain the increase in uh, to 2021, it explains it to some degree, but in 2022, the pandemic does not explain it. It remains high ischemic heart disease. Cerebrovascular disease, which is primarily strokes. Again, maybe not as bad a picture as uh, ischemic heart disease, but still increase in cerebrovascular disease deaths unequivocally in 2022. Again, in the waves of the pandemic, we would expect it to some extent. We would not expect it in 2022. Um, heart failure, quite a big increase in heart failure. So heart failure is where the, uh, the heart muscle, the contraction of the myocardium is insufficient to eject enough blood to meet the metabolic demands of the body. The heart is just not working and that's often accompanied by a backlog where you get this edema, sometimes in the lungs, sometimes in, in the rest of the body and you get swollen ankles and things like that. So again, um, I'm afraid we see pretty high increases in heart failure um, throughout 2022 so more people are dying of heart failure that is clear the data tells us that clearly it does not tell us why more people are dying of heart failure this is what needs to be interrogated uh, urgently I would have thought um, this one is a uh, cancer now we do see areas here where cancers are less than normal now, this is quite a relief. I had been worried about greatly increased amounts of cancers, and we're not seeing a massive surge of cancers at the moment. A mass, we're not seeing, a, of course, cancer's common. It's all over, but, but it always has been, tra tragically. Um, but the point is we are seeing, we're not seeing dramatically more cancers than we would normally expect to see. So that is, that is good news. The, the line there is what we'd expect to see. So at the moment, uh, less cancer deaths. <laughs> in that time period than we would normally uh, expect to see, which is good. Although there has been increased episodes, of course. Now, this one's really surprising. This is other respiratory diseases. And we see that way less people than we would expect to die from other respiratory diseases. Way less than we would expect. So, um, you would have thought, if it's an after, after effect of the pandemic, which was primarily affecting the lungs, you would expect more people dying of respiratory disease. In actual fact, we're seeing less indicating there's other factors at play here, I would have thought. Um, so, um, yeah, less people dying of other respiratory diseases in uh, England. Um, I think that's probably all I've got there. Uh, yeah, other, oh, this is just to emphasise it, weekly registered deaths, other respiratory diseases. Just another way of looking at it. We see that the dotted line is what we would expect. And the, the, the figures are way below average. So um, that is really difficult to explain in terms of the, of the pandemic. Uh, liver disease, uh, that's increased as well. So more people dying of uh, liver disease, way more than we would expect actually. Um, so less people dying of lung disease, more people dying of heart disease, cerebrovascular disease, liver disease, more people dying, cancers about the same. So tragically, we see that the excess deaths is affecting all age ranges in the UK. Um, more younger people are dying than we would expect for the five year period. Um, it's, it's, it's a remarkably sad, 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 sad situation. 
More people dying of ischemic heart disease, heart disease generally, more people dying of heart failure, more people dying of liver disease, cancer about the same. Thankfully, not more people dying of cancer, but way less people dying of other respiratory diseases. You'd think there's something for epidemiologists to really get the teeth into there, wouldn't you? And yet, sadly, we hear very little. I'm going to leave it there because I've uh, expressed emotion on this before. There's no advantage to me doing that again. Urgent investigations required into what is causing these excess deaths. They're individuals. Thank you. Thank you for watching. We'll leave it there.